this cooler I bought for one dollar and it goes regularly on sale for under five dollars and it is out of the box AM4 compatible and LGA 2011 compatible. For the other sockets it's gonna be a problem but the question for today's video is can this thing actually cool something decent and that's why we're here with other AliExpress special components because of course this you can buy on AliExpress for that price anywhere else you're gonna pay more and we have a 40 bucks AM4 motherboard which I have already reviewed on the channel it's pretty good and I've also bought a Ryzen 7 5700X to really stress test this thing so this is an 8 core 16 threaded AM4 CPU with a pretty hefty TDP and this thing well it's not the first time I tried so I am kind of cheating but I've actually tried this on a Ryzen 5 5000 series but I'm not gonna spoil you guys the result so I say we go ahead open up this thing get it installed which is super easy and take a look at what it can and cannot do okay let's get started with this Igo Ice 200 CPU cooler Let's unbox such a high quality product. So we get a manual. Wow, that's such, such a huge manual. Incredible. <laughs> then we get the actual cooler, which, okay, we have uh, the, this to remove. And it is a dual heat pipe cooler right there. It is very sharp, so be careful, machined aluminum. We have a small fan, now I have pretty big hands, but this is size comparison. And this is RGB, but it is not controllable RGB because we only have a 3-pin to connect it. Which also means the fan is not PWM. Interesting. And uh, it's locked actually pretty tight. Let's see what else we get. Actually, no mounting screws. Okay, so this is to be expected, but uh, in the part list we actually have the buckle, you know, all those things. Uh, which we do not actually get interesting okay guys i found them they were actually on the underside of the box so we do get them now these are basically to connect to intel sockets so for intel sockets uh, this is basically like a stock cooler so you plug the plastic bit over here you slot this one in the motherboard and then by putting the clip in you widen the bottom and it's not gonna come out and then over here you're gonna just uh, clip the cooler just like this but if you have an amd motherboards like we have here today things are super easy because you just go ahead make sure you place it in this direction and uh, you basically clip it on the included amd's screws you're gonna try their thermal paste first and then put a better one Okay, so let's go ahead and use this thing on our Ryzen. Whoa, this paste is terrible. You can just tell by how not dense it is. And also you cannot apply it properly. So you have to just uh, put it like that. Now we can mount our cooler. So you clip it on one side, you lock it onto the paste, hoping it's gonna be a decent spread. And then with a lot of strength, you just go ahead and clip this just like that and it's now mounted now once it is actually mounted it's pretty solid i have to say like i was expecting much much worse from it <laughs> genuinely and uh, it doesn't move on the cpu as you can see so so far i'd say mounting uh, very easy for am4 not the best for intel and mounting pressure is okay we plug the only cable in the CPU fan slot. And now we go test it out. Well, I've run a variety of stress tests and we can now talk temperatures, okay? And let me just tell you off the bat, this thing is surprisingly good. So the idle temperature in the 30 degrees is what you would expect from any kind of cooler. We went ahead and tested full load synthetic tests. Okay, so first off, I run just a standard CPU-Z benchmark, which does multi-core and single-core, and the maximum temperature we saw 
was in the 70s, which is extremely good. Now, before we move on, a few things about our test conditions. So I tested fully stock conditions and we are now in winter in Italy. So we have an ambient temperature of 15 degrees. So if you're gonna run the PC on 25 degrees Celsius, well, add 10 degrees to my numbers and they're gonna make sense. For synthetic stuff, we ran a CPU-Z stress test until it's stabilized and it reached a maximum of 75 degrees all core, which is insanely good. It means even in hotter climate, it's gonna do a maximum of 85 degrees, which is not bad at all. I then run the ultimate stress test, which is Prime 95 small FFT, let it run for quite a while. And even there, it actually did even less than CPU-Z. We stabilized at around 74 degrees, absolute maximum I saw. And I also ran Cinebench and we got the same result. Just to make sure, I ran gaming tests. However, I did not put everything into the case, so we don't have GPU heat as a factor. So that's gonna be the main difference. And surprisingly, it did a maximum of 75 degrees gaming also, which means the CPU is basically power limited. So that means that the CPU cooler, five bucks CPU cooler, under five bucks can handle an eight core 16 threaded Ryzen 7 5700X just fine if you're running such CPU at stock in a B450 motherboard like the one we have here today. If you try to unlock the power limit on the CPU, even just by a little bit, it's gonna overheat dramatically and you cannot go with a higher CPU. So the maximum you can run is a Ryzen 7. Off camera, I also tested a Ryzen 5 5600 and in my previous build, the one I was referring to at the start of the video. And for that CPU, it was incredibly good. So it was a bit warmer climate wise, but we still stayed under 80 degrees maximum, no matter the load, even in full synthetic stuff. Now, case wise, again, it's not gonna be cooler dependent. So if you put this in a terrible case, your PC is gonna overheat. But if you put this in a case with a good enough airflow and this fan is not gonna provide the airflow, so you need airflow from other fans in your case, you're gonna be plenty fine and encounter temperatures very similar to what I found here today. And I can actually surprisingly recommend this cooler. Crazy, but apparently you can spend five bucks on a cooler for M4 and be happy. With that said, let me know down below if you tried this cooler, if you tried similar cheap coolers, and you want me to take a look at different ones, tell me which ones and I will try to get them. And if you watched the video this far, maybe drop a like and subscribe. See you guys in the next one. Bye bye.